42 years ago. Today was the last day of President Amadou Ahijo in office as the President of the Republic of Cameroon because the next day, November 4th, 1982, he resigned as the President of the Republic of Cameroon. And today on TFA Talking Point, we are going to look through history to understand how Amadou Ahijo became the first president of the Republic of Cameroon and the first president of the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And also to answer one particular question, whether he also contributed to the atrocity or the calamity that has befallen the people of Southern Cameroon today, where more than 10,000 people uh, have been brutally killed, more than 250 villages burnt down, and more than millions of people stranded, wandering in forests and in foreign country as a refugee. Did Amadou Ahijo contribute to this? And how was Amadou Ahijo a dictator or a good government? And because people keep on comparing him with President Pobia, did he involve in any problems in Cameroon and contributed to any? We are going to talk about it today on TFA Talking Point. And if this is our first time joining TFA Talking Point, Please subscribe to our channel, follow us on all our social media platforms. TFA Talking Point is all about proposing lasting solutions to societal problems. And there is no way we can learn or we can have solutions to some of our problems without going into history to understand what was there. And President Amadou Ahijo, I'm not going to start from his biography, but I'm starting somewhere. On December 22, 1942, President Amadou Ahijo was one of those who were elected into the Representative Assembly of Cameroon, Rakam. In 1947, Rakam was debunked, was bound in Cameroon, and Territorial Assembly of Cameroon was created in 1952. And in March 1952, election took place to occupy 50 seats, and Amadou Ahijo was elected amongst them. In 1957, a territorial assembly of Cameroon was transformed into a legislative assembly of Cameroon, and another election was held. And the Union Cameroonians, UC, of President Amadou Ahijo won 30 seats and was the majority, but formed coalition with Andre Marimbida. And they took Andre Marimbida became the first prime minister of French Cameroon, and Amadou Ahijo was the deputy prime minister under Amadou, uh, uh, André Marimbida, and also minister of interior. In February 1958, Amadou Ahijo ordered his UC ministers to resign from Mbida's government because there was a problem, and because Mbida came up with a 10-year agenda without including independence. That was in 1958 when all African countries were fighting for independence. Andre Marin Bida came out with 10 years program without including independence and reunification with British Cameroon. And this anger Amadou Ahijo and he orders problems started. And he asked all his ministers from his own party to resign from the government of Andre Marin Bida. And this caused Andre Marin Bida a lot. And Andre Marin Bida lack a majority in the Legislative Assembly of Cameroon and Amadou Ahijo he mobilized a vote of no confidence against him and Bida was forced to resign in February 1958 by Jan Ramadia, the French High Commissioner. And Amadou Ahijo replaced him, Andre Marin Bida, as Prime Minister in French Cameroon. That was in February 1958. In September, as Prime Minister of French Cameroon, September 1958, Amadou Ahijo offered conditional amnesty to the UPC supporters. And Mai Martin accepted. And this caused a lot of conflict in the UPC party. And the UPC split into two. Between 1958 to 1959, Amadou Ahijo negotiated the independence of French Cameroon with the British Cameroon, French Cameroon. And on January 1st, 1960, French Cameroon gained independence as the Republic of Cameroon with Amadou Ahijo as the first president of 
French Cameroon. Immediately after the independence of French Cameroon, Amado Ahijo started negotiating for reunification with British Cameroon. But something happened. The, the, the United Nations set a plebiscy in British, Southern, in British Cameroon and British Northern Cameroon voted to join Nigeria. Why British Southern Cameroon voted to join French Cameroon? And on June 1st, 1961, officially British Northern Cameroon joined Nigeria and, and uh, uh, Amadou Ahijo declared June 1st as National Day of Mourning in, 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 in French Cameroon and also including Southern Cameroon. And immediately after that, he started negotiating for reunification with British Southern Cameroon because they voted to join them. They started negotiating with Jango Foncha, who was the Prime Minister of British Southern Cameroon. And the Jango Foncha, they prepared everything and organized the FUMBA conference. Constitutional Conference, which took place, that was in, in July 1961. In July 1961, it took place. And Amadou Ahijo then organized the Yawunde, a Trabatai Conference, to complete the reunification, a, a formality, in August, the same year, 1961. And on October 1st, 1961, in Buya. British Southern Cameroon gained independence by joining French Cameroon. And that is why British Southern Cameroon and even Ambazonia still hold on to this particular date, that it is the, their date of independence. That is the day they, they achieved their independence. And joining, British, joining French Cameroon, Amadou Ahijo became the first president of the Fedra. Republic of Cameroon, because when they came to that union, they formed a federal government, two state federation, East Cameroon and West Cameroon. And Amadou Ahijo was the president of this federal government, and Jongo Fonchan was the vice president of the federal government. Of the federal government. 1st October 1961. On the 20th of October, that is 19 days after. President Amadou Ahijo took his first move against reunification. Because I always tell you people that Amadou Ahijo did not genuinely come into re this union. He was coming in there with a secondary objective of assimilation and unity, creating one Cameroon. And then 19 days after, he started the journey against reunification by signing a decree creating six territorial regions and inspectorate headed by federal inspector answerable directly to him and west cameroon was equal in statute to each of the other five administrative regions in ex cameroon he appointed ex cameroonians jean clonga as federal inspector in west cameroon with wider power than the power that the prime minister in west cameroon was having he created a single political party in September 1966, dissolving all the political party that was in southern Cameroon, like the KNDP. He dissolved all of them and created just one political party, single party, with a list system. And he was the chairperson. And he used the, the Cameroon National Union, that is his party, a list system to nominate members into state and federal legislatures, meaning if you are not in support of his party, you cannot become a member of the National Assembly, of the Assembly. His desire for a unitary state increased, and those opposed to unitary state were excluded from the CNU list to enter parliament. So this is a condition that the people of Southern Cameroon found themselves. There was no choice. You must be and you must collaborate with the ruling party, just as it is today with the CPD. Amadou Ahijo did not allow civil liberties in Cameroon generally as freedom of speech, a press, movement, association, and it was difficult to oppose him. It was very difficult to oppose him. 
Southern Cameroonians who were not used with all these uh, oppressions and repression started moving with pieces of paper to identify themselves under the leadership of Amadou Ahijo. On the 6th, 6th of May 1972, 6th May 1972, President Amadou Ahijo informed the, the party, that is the CNU, a, 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 a militants and a central committees of his desire to create a unitary state and later informed the federal parliament in Yaoundé of the need to create a unitary state and it was approved by the parliament. In line with the unitary state, Amadou Ahijo is submitted to the Cameroon people a one-sided referendum. People keep on holding on to it that it was a one-sided referendum. Why? I'm going to read it to you, the question that it, 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 it gave to them. Given the advantage of unitary state, the question was, do you approve with view of consolidating national unity and accelerating the economy? social and cultural development of the nation many if you say no many you are an enemy to economic social and cultural development of the nation so it was very difficult for people to vote no very difficult so everybody vote yes in which majority could and then knowing where fully the the kind of oppression and repression the kind of torture the military were doing and the police how Amadou Aijo was using them People were afraid to say no, because if you say no, meaning you are an enemy to the state. You don't want the development of the country. And on May 20, 1972, the federal structure was abolished. And a new constitution made with the formation of the United Republic of Cameroon. And this is how President Amadou Ahijo created the Anglophone crisis. Immediately, he, he dissolved the federal system. The, the people of southern Cameroon, it, it, it became second-class citizens in their own country. They never have any freedom. Let me tell you what the things that happened, the calamity that he caused by dissolving the federal government. Some of them were, the name of the country was changed from the Federal Republic of Cameroon to United Republic of Cameroon on 2nd June. 1972. The two states were abolished and seven provinces created in 1972, headed by governors, appointed by the president. The post of the vice president was abolished. The three governments, that is, East Cameroon State, West Cameroon State, and the federal government were eliminated. A single national government was established in Yaoundé under Amadou Ahijo with wider powers. The four assemblies were abolished, namely the East Cameroon House of Assembly in Yaoundé, the West Cameroon House of Assembly in Buya, the West Cameroon House of Chiefs in Buya, and the Federal House of Assembly in Yaoundé and a single national assembly was established in Yaoundé with 120 seats in 1972. Two golden stars superimposed on the green a color of the national flag were replaced by a single star on the red color. In 1975, the post of Prime Minister was reintroduced. And in 1979, the Constitution was amended, and TFA talking point who on to that this was a constitutional code that, that Amadou Ahijo carry in favor of President Pobia. And the Prime Minister was given the legal right to succeed the President and complete his mandate. And this was just against the people of Southern Cameroon, because before this, the constitution, the person, the constitutional successor of the president was supposed to be the president of the National Assembly, who was S.T. Mona by then. So, Abadu Ahijo created a, 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 a cause and a, a created a, a, a carry on a constitutional coup d'etat in favor of President Pobia, and this is where everything started.
the maltreatment of the people of southern Cameroon, the torture, the, all, every kind of thing. Yandans were sent to southern Cameroon in the name of harmonizing the security. In southern Cameroon was just the police. And then they took and shared the police all over. And this is where problems started. Amadou Ahijo, for all these year, 25 years in office, did not create any anglo saxon university in southern Cameroon for the people of southern Cameroon, but forced all southern Cameroonians to go through the University of Yaoundé in order to be assimilated. And those who came back home from abroad, from Nigeria, Ghana, and other uh, European countries that they study in English, Amadi Ahijo put them on low salary, and you must go through the Yaoundé University. Maybe for two months or for one year or half sort of, you must speak French before you can receive a, a salary that is meaningful. And this is how the people of Southern Cameroon were being tortured by President Amadou Ahijo. And today was his last day in office. And tomorrow we will be dropping another video on how Amadou Ahijo resigned and the trouble that was created between him and President Pobia. It, was, it will be titled a constitutional coup d'etat carried by Amadou Ahijo and President Pobia.